Welcome to the Continuum Lab and welcome to the quarantine. Just like the rest of Spain, I am locked up in my home right now. Uh, I only go out for groceries and it's been like that for a couple of weeks and it seems like it might be like that for maybe another month. So, uh, the most important thing that you can do in this kind of crazy situation is to keep busy up here so that you don't wallow in self-pity and negative thoughts. I really do have quite a bit of, okay, I have really a lot of electronics here. I have tons of materials and uh, lots of goodies for making instruments. So I'm going to be uh, making some DIY sensors. I'm going to improvise some MIDI controllers. Of course, I'm going to film the whole thing and I'll share it with you guys because I guess you're also stuck at home, really bored. To do that, I'm going to bring back a previous video format that I used to do here in the Continuum Lab. It's a little more improvised and uh, informal than my other scripted videos. I call it The Control Freak. Let's get started. So today what I want to do is I want to make some analog pressure sensors out of electrostatic bags, also known as Velostat material. So this is not my invention. This is a tried and tested method. I did some work on this a couple of years back, but I never really perfected my methods and techniques and I never used those sensors for any instruments. So hopefully today I can work my way up to a useful sensor and then in the next video I will perhaps use that for a cool instrument. So, let's get building. As usual for the Control Freak projects, I've already gathered the materials that I think I will need in this box here. The first thing I want to show you is this little guy. This is a force sensitive resistor. This is basically an industrial version of what I'm going to try to make here today. And if you look at the plug down here at the end, you can see there's a little uh, three contact plug. And uh, we have a resistor soldered in between the middle pin and one of the side pins. So that's a very simple voltage divider circuit and we're also going to need to make one of those for today's sensor. So I've decided that I'm going to make these two parts separately so that the voltage divider circuit goes on a little circuit board and then the sensor module can be plugged into it. That will make it easier to prototype and to change things along the way. So uh, I'll start by making the sensor. And for that of course I need, as I mentioned, some of this Velostat material. This is uh, one of the uh, black conductive bags electrostatic bags. This is how they typically look. Some yellow writing on there, black plastic-like material. Um, this should do nicely. Then I need some conductive material. I'm going to use this uh, copper sticky tape here. Then I need some uh, structural material to sandwich everything in between and hold it all together. I'm going to use some of this plastic here from this packaging for a glue gun. And there's some nice rigid sheets of flat plastic right here. I'm going to use that. And then I need something to glue these things together uh, and I'm using some of this double-sided tape here. This is a very nice uh, thin double-sided tape which is going to just laminate these layers uh, very nicely. So let's get started. There. Next thing I need to make two copper electrodes that will go on each side of this by making a square shape at either end with a flap running off to the side. That's what that looks like. So the way this all goes together is copper side in against the velostat like that and then the other piece on the opposite side so that the flaps don't touch. Next I need to make the main structure. So I need two squares of this material That's too small. These squares need to be quite a lot larger than the Velostat material. Maybe I could just, I'm going to cut a little bit off of this. Now we have a suitable edge around here that will help to stick everything together. And the Velostat square just needs to be bigger than these copper squares here and that is still the case. So we're good. I need another one of these plastic ones. And finally, I need to uh, get the double-sided tape and I need to cover one of these in the double-sided tape. 
the way you do this is very simple. You just get a slightly oversized piece. See, the thing is that this tape is more narrow than the plastic, so we need two pieces. So we just lay it down like this so that it overlaps on three sides. Then you can get your scissors, trim the edges like that. And then you just do that again for the other side. Right flush up against it there. And then you trim the edges. There. Okay, so next I'll get rid of the uh, backing layer here. There. Now I'll stick one of the copper tape pieces onto this square of plastic and the other onto this other one. That's those. Now I'm going to just fold this flap back on itself to give it a little more strength. This is where you will solder the cable onto, or in my case, I have some alligator clips that I'm going to uh, clip onto it. There, and now I just need to lay down the uh, Velostat square so that it perfectly covers one of these. I'm going to use the one with the double-sided tape on it because that way the Velostat will stick and uh, be much easier to deal with. Perfect. See how it covers up all of the copper? Now I can lay the other electrode on top. And there is our sensor. And that's the final result. Really a pretty simple thing. So the idea here is that when you uh, compress the copper over the velostat material, you will in principle reduce the uh, resistance between those two electrodes and then you can measure that through the voltage divider circuit. So uh, next up, we make the voltage divider circuit board. So we're going to need some uh, strip board and a resistor. I have a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor here. I think this might be a good value, uh, otherwise I'll try a different one. And then uh, I'm going to need some male headers to set up the little circuit board. I need a three pin male header and a two pin one. There you go. Then, of course, I have the uh, breakout board that I'll be connecting everything to. That has a series of uh, headers here for analog sensors, three pins on each. So I'm going to need a three connection cable like this one to connect my voltage divider circuit to the microcontroller. And then I have the last cable here, which is going to uh, connect to the voltage divider and then clamp onto the sensor with these alligator clips. So let's do it. First, I'll cut out a suitable piece of uh, strip board. The important thing is here, you want something which is three strips wide. Something like that. So this is a really simple cir circuit here. It has the triple header at one end and the double header at the other end. Yes, my soldering iron is completely messed up. That's what happens when you bring your own gear to workshops with a bunch of 12-year-olds. There, that's all the pins soldered in. Let's see. No shorts. Very nice. Next, the resistor. So this goes from the middle rail to the side rail that has an empty spot at the end here with, where the double header is at. So basically like that. Let's solder that in. And uh, I'm going to put up a drawing on the screen right now so you can see uh, specifically how this is put together, where the resistor goes and everything. That is the complete voltage divider circuit. So then now we can plug in this cable here at one end and this one here at the other end. Then we can get our alligator clips and we can clip those onto the sensor, there and there. Then we get the other end of this cable. So in order to know how we plug this into the breakout board, we just check our voltage divider circuit here and the resistor should be going off to ground. So ground in this case would be the yellow cable. And so we're just going to plug this in so that the ground rail, which is the outer rail, has the yellow cable on it. I'm plugging into pin 24. And that is the complete circuit, sensor, voltage divider, and everything. 
I can't wait to uh, plug that into the computer and uh, fire up Arduino and see if this, any of this stuff actually works. So let's do it. Okay, so here we are in Arduino. I have put together the simplest possible analog read sketch here, just to read the analog pin and print it to serial. So let's upload that. Looks good. Let's open up the serial monitor. There. Now uh, the uh, maximum reading here is 1023, so I can see we're pretty close to that already. That's not such a good sign, but let's see what happens if I press a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely working. But I do need some more resolution here. So how this works is that right now we're sort of measuring the difference in uh, resistance between this resistor here and this variable resistor here. So we need to change one of these values in order to get a different output. Rather than desolder this resistor, I think I'm going to try to change this value and I'm going to do that in a very simple way by opening up the sensor sandwich and putting in a second layer of velostat and then closing everything back up. Let's see how that works. Get another little piece of this. Nice. Just peel this back, hopefully, without breaking anything. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, damn it. I broke the copper electrode. I got that stuck under my nail. I'm gonna have to just quickly make another one of those. Okay. We are back in business. Second layer of Velostat. Was it there? And uh, I can already see that we're getting more sensible readings here. Now we're down at 930 or so, which will give us almost 100 points of resolution. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's not quite good enough. See, I use all of my sensors for MIDI controllers. And so if I want to be able to map the values from the sensor to MIDI values, I need 127 points or more. So uh, yeah, this doesn't quite cut it. Okay, now we're lower. Now we're down at 870 or so. But we're drifting. So we're drifting upwards towards the 920 mark. Maybe I should try to find a lower resistor value. Maybe a 1K resistor would help. Um, be right back. I am back. I was totally unable to find any 1K resistors, but I found some 220 ohm resistors. I think these might be way too low, but I am going to try it desolder the old resistor and then get the new one in there. There's the new resistor. Let's see if it works. Okay, this is very interesting. Now we're getting a reading of 530. Sweet. So uh, let's see what the sensor does. Okay, that's nice. Okay, perfect. So a 220 ohm resistor turns out to work quite well. Now we have plenty of resolution. But uh, okay, so there we go. We have like 500 points of resolution, that's plenty. And if I press even harder, yeah, that's awesome. So this is a very nice sensor. So the last thing that I want to test is now after changing the resistor value to such a low value, can I get rid of the second layer of Velostat and still get enough resolution? So, um, unhook this. Let's just see if I can open this up without breaking anything this time. Okay. Out you go. Let's try to hook this back up. Okay, that's looking pretty promising. That's pretty good. We're getting a reading below 700, which means that we get a resolution of over 200 points. That's cool because if I have to always put in two layers, then things are just 
twice as complicated, so much better like this. So that's the recipe. One layer of velostat material in between copper electrodes, and one 220 ohm resistor at the other side, and that makes for a very nice and highly functional DIY analog pressure sensor. Wow, that was super cool. And honestly, I can say much, much easier to figure out than I remembered from my previous experiments. But then of course, maybe I'm just a better maker now than I was three or four years ago. So this is very interesting for my current quarantine um, situation because this material is something that I actually have quite a lot of. I have tons of electrostatic bags, like lots of them, and I have hundreds of 220 ohm resistors, so I'll be able to make as many of these sensors as I want. And uh, so that means that in the next video, I'm definitely using this fancy DIY sensor technology to make some kind of cool MIDI instrument. So hang around for that. If you want to make sure you don't miss it, then you should subscribe right here in the Continuum Lab. Find me over on Instagram, also as Continuum Lab. And uh, that's it for today. Take care until next time. Stay indoors, wash your hands, and I'll see you in the Continuum.